Hey artists, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about an introduction to 3D printers. That's my 3D printer. I just bought it. It's my first 3D printer. And I wanted to talk about how possibly a 3D printer could aid a traditional artist like me. I've always kind of considered myself to be more of a traditionalist. And but in the past, I've used 3D printers. I was not very happy with 3D printing because there's so many errors. It's not very intuitive. I've also been a fan of 3D modeling on the computer and I'm a fan of like ZBrush, Blender, Maya. I've used them all. I wanted to see if I could scan my sculptures and then bring them to the 3D printer and then print them. And I've already been doing that. So that's the 3D printer. If you're thinking about the cost, brand new, I think they might be like $300. You can get cheaper 3D printers for like 180 or so. But I bought this for $100 on the marketplace used. And I think what, what ha happens with 3D printers that people get 3D printers, they print like a whole spool and things don't come out, they want them to come out because it does require a little bit of like technical support while you're printing stuff. And I think that puts off a lot of people. So these are open source 3D printers. This is a Creality Ender 3D Pro. And it's completely open source. You can like get the parts, build it yourself, very easy. But I like the idea of an open source 3D printer that uses the big spools and then it's very inexpensive. The spools themselves are like $20, less than $20. Uh, resin printers are about $14 to $20, but they have much less material. So the spool stuff, the filament, is what most people tend to use. Another thing that I bought is a Creality Lizard. A Creality Lizard by the same maker as this 3D printer is a scanner. And I am very interested in the scanner. And I've already scanned a uh, test sculpture. So in the previous video, what I did was create this Lion Keystone. This has been the first project I've scanned using the Creality Lizard 3D scanner. And as you guys know, if you watch the video, I sculpted this in oil clay and to make a keystone for a house. So this one in particular is flat, so it's going to be glued onto the surface and bolted down. But this is a mix of cement and plaster. It's heavy and it takes a long time to dry. So I have to wait maybe a few weeks before all the stuff is gone. So I just kind of air dry it. But I scanned this and I want to show you the results. Here is the first scan. As you can tell, it's a pretty darn good close version of it and I scaled it down. And that's what I like about this is that I can scale down a 3D print. So that has a lot of possibilities for traditional sculptors. And then I made a even smaller version and the quality of it is pretty darn decent. You would think that it would uh, be much worse, but I'm kind of happy with it because if you are going to be a sculptor, doing this is really beneficial. And I find that it's like I'm thinking, why even make molds and make different versions? It's so messy. It takes up a lot of time. It costs a lot of money. So if you have a 3D scanner, you can potentially scan it. Now there are complexities when it comes to doing this because you have to learn about the software. But in future videos, I'm gonna show you exactly the easiest way of doing this. And it's not as hard as you might think. And really the hardest part is the sculpture. The scanning takes less than 30 minutes and then you have to bring it to the computer you have to manipulate the 3D object if it's damaged or something. Generally, one of these, sometimes printers also print badly. So this one printed this section kind of badly. But this one ended up being perfect because it was small. So you take the object and then you send it to the printer using a different file name. But 
I thought this is really fascinating because in order for me to traditionally scale this down, I would have to use calipers and scale it down and re-sculpt it and basically take a lot of measurements. But with 3D scanning, I could do it this size. And let's say that I wanted to add more detail to this and make another rubber mold. I can add more detail to this, essentially carving, and then go back, make another mold, and have it as detailed as I want. So there's a lot of possibilities here. And another thing is with a subscriber that wanted the Incredible Hulk sculpture, this is kind of an amazing thing. So I could send him the SDL file and have him print the Hulk directly. Or I can just print it, ship it to him in England, and here we go. So there's a whole lot nicer when it comes to this. So this object to ship via mail would be kind of costly because it's heavy, bulky, and kind of fragile because if you drop it, it'll break into like four or five parts. But these plastic bits are hard to break. I also scanned the Hellboy sculpture and now I have like a little bit of a half head, but I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. You know, I was thinking about throwing them up on my Etsy, but it's not exactly fully finished, so I'm gonna be keep working on this. Another example of what I'm gonna do is scan this Mars Attacks Alien, and I do like it, but I never thought I would be investing in a reproduction with rubber. So now that I have this, I'm gonna scan this and I am gonna make a 3D print just to see what it will look like. But this opens up a lot of possibilities for traditional sculptors. And I wanted to show you guys because, you know, a lot of times traditional artists don't wanna combine the digital age and contemporary type of styles. But I wanna take you guys through this adventure. It'll be interesting. You know, currently I'm printing a scan of a old plaster copy that I have. So it'll be kind of cool. But if you like this video, make sure you hit that like. And if you don't like it, hit the dislike and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.